Welcome, Welcome to, to Eye on you. you. In this episode, we have invited Ms. Tari Lee, the chairperson of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong. Since the central government has taken action to improve Hong Kong's electoral system, the political situation in Hong Kong is expected to enter a new phase. The DAP has also put forward the slogan of Reform Hong Kong earlier this year, and is determined to play a more significant role in Hong Kong's political arena. As the director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office of the State Council, Xiao Bao Long have said earlier, there should be five competency requirements and two political requirements for the future leaders of Hong Kong. At the same time, he is also very concerned on the urgency to solve deep-rooted conflicts in the city. And I believe Ms. Dari Lee, as the leader of the DAB and a vital force in the pro-establishment camp, will surely have a lot to share with us on these issues and her view on the current political situation in Hong Kong. Hello, welcome, Dari. Hello. I'm most delighted to join your talk. I'm grateful for your invitation. So first of all, DAB has put forward this motion reform Hong Kong in the beginning of this year, and uh, aiming to meet the new requirements for political parties' role under the improved election systems. So what is the focus and the direction of the reform of the DAB in this? The slogan of reform Hong Kong was introduced by DAB last year mm -hmm. before the implementation of the improved electoral system. The reform was discussed in terms of six aspects. First of all, administration, structure of Hong Kong economy, land and housing issue, disparity between the wealthy and those in poverty, policy on younger generation, and judicial reform. We would like to advocate reform for Hong Kong for prosperity, stability, and the benefit of Hong Kong people. To reform Hong Kong, become one of our party's major goals in the coming years. So 2019 was a very difficult year for the pro-establishment camp together with DAB. So as the party chairperson, what has been done to keep up the morale for your party and your members? In a competition, victory or defeat is a certainty in reality. We have to face it squarely, constructively and positively. Loss of seats and resources will only keep us remind of our humbleness to serve the community at large. With more concrete work down to earth, to better address the need of Hong Kong people, to gain more of their support, to assist the administration. We have made adjustments in distributing resources to reallocating them. We keep our services in the community. During the COVID-19 period, we can see that most of the DAB members and also the pro-establishment friend, mm. all of us stand in the community to fight together with Hong Kong people. As we all know that you are the chairwoman of the DAB, um, you are the member of LESCO and the one member of the district council, and also you are the house community chairman in the LESCO. So there are so many responsibility and work workload for yourself. So how are you going to do with the with all this responsibility, and how how are you going to strike the balance between work and family? As far as I'm concerned, there is no inconsistency among various capacities. I'm here to serve the nation and the Hong Kong people. To me, different capacity only imply different contribution in different levels and degree. Well, I understand that time management is one of the most important things that I have to deal with. Inevitably, I have to sacrifice some of my personal time, leisure time, family and social gathering, and work as much as I can. Honestly, I'm not proud of sacrificing my family and my beloved for the sake of work. I always keep reminding myself I have to improve my efficiency. Luckily, I succeeded it in recent years. So next year is the 30th anniversary of the DAB, which is very exciting, and I'm very looking forward to it. So while DAB is the largest political party in Hong Kong, what expectation do you have for the future developments 
for the party. To start with, I have to and will unite our party member. On top of that, we have to unite the general society and all Hong Kong people. Because we believe that unity is good for our community for all purposes. How to achieve that? We will continue our district-based service through actively serving all walks of life in the community, serving them widely and closely. We will continue to seek and obtain their support. In these new circumstances, we will keep close contact with different stakeholders in the community for the sake of extending our network and services. Further, we would advocate more on policy initiative because we believe that Hong Kong is to enter a new phase. We have to have our policy suggestion brought up front to improve the livelihood of Hong Kong people. As we all know that there are new requirements for the overtaking for the district councillors, and there are lots of um, opposition parties that have resigned from the seats. So how are we as the pro-establishment camp uh, going to fill the gaps and to serve the community as um, what we used to do? Their resignation was not within our contemplation. As I've shared earlier, after the 2019 district council election, we managed to keep our district services by reallocating our resources. We will continue to serve the community humbly and unsparingly. Of course, in these new circumstances, we have to work even harder. Their resignation will not affect our work in the community. As Director Xia Bolong has mentioned that the housing problem in Hong Kong is a very crucial one to be solved, what will they be cooperate with the government to solve Hong Kong's livelihood issues, especially on the housing needs? We share the central government's concern on land and housing issue in this entirety. On top of that, we would like to add one more reminder to the Hong Kong SAR government. Apart from the ratification of the subdivided flats or torn flats or caged unit, the government need to pay attention to the property speculation and to speak up the building or rebuilding of the aged public housing in order to free up more spaces for the general public. So if we escalate it to, to a wider perspective or to another level, what the government should do to um, promote on the usage of the vacant land or, the, or to make it more effective on, the, on releasing more land for the residential buildings? Mm. In my opinion, the government should develop one more type of controlled housing. The purpose of this new type of controlled housing is solely for residential occupation for those in need. How to do that? First, the government have to provide land, vacant land or land at bare land premium, and to encourage private sector to build at their lowest minimum cost and allow a reasonable affordability to those in need. This occupation should confine to life interests. All this will only limit this type of controlled housing in fulfilling the purpose of occupation, but not for speculation. So the DAB has been focusing upon the development of the new territories north uh, developments recently. So what is your view on the relationship uh, among the new territory north development, Shenzhen and the Greater Bay Area. We strongly believe that the development of the new territory north should go in line with the development of the Greater Bay Area. In our opinion, the original planning of the new territory north and its original outline Songning plan should be amended because when they first decide they did not take into account the rapid development of the Greater Bay Area. We advocate more lands should be released for commercial, residential and other uses. Over the past years, we see there are lots of um, talent and members of DAB has been recruited by the government, uh, like Casper Choi and Christopher Ho. So what is the aim of uh, nurturing talents of DAB and what is the next goal for the DAB? I would like to reiterate that whoever joining the administration must have been detached from their 
political party, although they kept their membership. It applied to all political parties, including DAB. Regarding the nurturing of political talent, we have set up certain training protocol. It includes training program. Apart from training program, we have platform of bringing new forces and talent, and for younger generation to submit policy initiative, and have platform for them to materialize their proposal. Further, we will recommend them to post either in private sector, advisory or statutory body, or government department. Right. I'm one of the beneficiary uh, <laughs> of one he of these platforms. The as well. <laughs> so uh, President Xi used over 100 words to talk about Hong Kong in his speech at the CPC sanitary celebration on July the 1st. So what inspirations can we draw from President Xi's remarks for the development of DAB and what role can DAB play in the future governance uh, in the SAR? Hmm. Now that China is on its own feet, the national wealth become fit and our nation as a whole become much stronger in need. We have full confidence in our nation and we have confidence in Hong Kong to grow in the hand of our motherland. We DAB have to see this opportunity. We have to excel in different aspects in order to better serve the nation and the Hong Kong community. Thank you so much for your time, for coming to our show. Again, thanks for your invitation.